So here again is that situation that we are watching in suburban Portland, Oregon. This is Troutdale. And look at what's happening. These are live pictures coming into Fox News. Look at the gear that this man is putting on. We know that they are responding at Reynolds High School there in that suburban area to some sort of threat. First, we were told it might be an active shooter. We're working to shore up the details on this. But here are the facts that we know. Classes were in session when something happened on that campus this morning. That campus immediately went into lockdown. Parents were told to stay away. We know from our own reporting and what we've been able to pick up in the last little bit, the parents have shown up. Don't know if they went there before or after, but they are there now on the perimeter. So part of keeping the scene calm is trying to keep them back as well. So you see the perimeter that they've drawn there in the center of your screen and toward the back there, trying to keep people off this campus while they deal with this threat. And it is a heavy, show of force in excess of 100 police officers. I see the report of 30 to 40 on the bottom of our screen. We can update that. We can also update with two SWAT teams at the situation as well. The vice principal's wife reportedly got a text from her husband uh, about this situation. And so we know that a threat of violence has existed on this campus for about an hour and 45 minutes. As we get more details, we'll bring them to you. We are watching very closely the story out of Portland, Oregon, or nearby there in Troutdale today. Stay with us on this breaking news. We'll update people as we get it. And this is a Fox News alert. Back to that reported school shooting. We are just getting this breaking across the urgent queue. The sheriff's office out of there in Oregon is confirming that the shooter is dead. To repeat, the shooter is deceased at the scene in Oregon. The situation has been stabilized by the sheriff's department. We are awaiting breaking news details about the circumstances of exactly what happened. When you have a case like this with an active shooter on scene, you have multiple agencies, people communicating information. The first objective is to go in, secure the scene, and make sure that there aren't any additional lives lost. Once you've secured the scene like that, then they can come in and give us more information of exactly the circumstances surrounding it. Was the shooter, someone who was killed by law enforcement officer, did the shooter turn the gun on themselves like we've seen in many of these situations that are highly volatile, emotional, especially when someone makes a choice to go into a school like that to do great harm. So we're going to bring in Dr. Keith Ablo to talk about some of the circumstances here. So often we see people that are making these choices, some of it is premeditated. There are thoughts that they've recorded in a diary, online, in YouTube videos. Perhaps they have been seeking the help from a mental health professional like yourself, troubled individuals, maybe problems at home. We have to yeah. try and unravel it to find out how it happened. And I, you know, I think Americans may finally be getting the idea that the first thing they should think about is mental health gone awry mm. in this system we have that's so fractured that lets people slip through the cracks. But the anti gun nuts, they will be out in force saying it's all the guns. I predict, again, that we'll find that yet another person who used a gun was compromised by one or more psychological or psychiatric illnesses that could have been detected, because that's how the odds stack up. It's been the case again and again and again that you say, how could this possibly happen? But I don't say that, because I work as a psychiatrist, and I see and get these calls from ERs where they say, we want to send this person home. He threatened his mother and his family last night, but now he's promising he's fine, and we got to get him out of here because the insurance company's on our backs. Mm -hmm. That's our system. Mm -hmm. That's why this is happening. Harris, you have some details uh, Yeah, us? just a couple of developments now, and they are responding now and calling this a shooting for obvious reasons yes. if the shooter is reportedly dead. Uh, and then also, this is about 15 miles outside of Portland. This is a fairly large high school. And again, it was in session with classes when this happened. You know, something that we saw as this was coming together were those people huddled together. Yeah. And that made such an impression on me. I mean, we have children, but you don't have to have children to know pain when you see it. This has a reverberating effect, doctor. Well, it, it does because all of us well, all of us who have children, you dread that call, mm, right? Yeah. You dread that call. You know that your life would never be the same. And, you know, I always tell grieving parents who I counsel, I can't fathom what you're yeah. going through. And will your life ever be the same? It won't, right. right? Because that's the Achilles heel of anybody who has a kid. They know that the worst call you can get is from a pediatrician or a police officer. You don't want those calls. Yeah. Right, and that's what these parents are going through right now because they don't know, is my kid okay? This brings up the, the controversial issue. Should security officers there on campuses carry weapons? Because Katie was saying that your dad is a teacher and he says that they teach them all this training because it usually takes SWAT 
what, yep. 40 minutes to get right. to the they, scene? Yeah, they go through these trainings at these public high schools for a situation like this, but the problem is that, you know, it, they do the best that they can with the training, but it takes right. paramedics and the SWAT team 40 minutes to get to the appropriate location and to 40, find the shooter. And a lot can be and done in 40 minutes. A lot can happen in one minute, not yeah. to mention 40 minutes. Yeah. And so yep. there are some really serious questions about whether that training is the best way to go about how to handle a situation like this. Well, you know, and as a parent, wouldn't you perhaps feel more secure if you knew there was somebody there, armed security, to manage and handle a situation like this? When you think back about Columbine, when you think back about mm -hmm. Virginia Tech, schools right. being compromised and targeted because they are traditionally gun-free zones and that's where people that are mentally they figured it out and they get in there you know, and they're going to do the most harm they can and like you said it might take 40 minutes for SWAT or someone to get in there lives lost in a matter of seconds we don't know in this story in this particular instance how long it took from that first call that decision to lock the school down and those two SWAT teams I mean that's a lot of force yeah. we did see that it took a little bit of time to for them to get from you know, a couple dozen police officers to well over 100, it's being reported by the command post there. So just the, the necessary size of force can take time as well. Two things hit me though, Kimberly, yeah. because we think of schools like hospitals as soft mm -hmm. targets. Right. And, and we only really talk like that in wartime. But when you're talking about psychological, unpredictable human beings, it can kind of feel like it's a wartime because you're fighting an well, enemy you can't see and that's that's, that's unpredictable a, yeah it's and we don't know that that's the case here but it's but, an interesting question yeah and I, I agree with Kimberly I think arming uh, and Katie arming uh, one or more people at these schools makes sense. Why wouldn't you want somebody duly yeah. empowered to protect a the kids? A lot of people don't there's want also, live don't, well, there, you know, weapons on the campus. There's also a great also, uh, uh, canines for kids. conference happening right now. Most of the buses are already there, and we'll probably know more in the next 15, 20 minutes, okay? And thanks to your parent and for your patience. <laughs> All right, there is another news conference coming up, we understand, in about 15 minutes. As you know, this is a fluid situation, and you can see all of those parents who've shown up at the program. scene, even though they were told not to. But as the doctor's saying, I, it would be impossible to resist the urge, at least, to go and find out if your beloved little one was okay. 2,800 students registered at the school, and a fair amount of them, we understand, were in classes this morning as this situation unfolded with some sort of an active shooter uh, on board. Kimberly, as you look at this, yeah. those parents have so many questions and, and you see those law enforce, enforcement people, they're struggling to answer them, but they're also trying to give a wider public some answers too. Absolutely. And one of the things in a, an active uh, shooting situation like that was experienced there this morning, you're going to have multiple units respond and special teams, tactical teams like SWAT teams that are really uh, highly skilled. They do a tremendous amount of training to be able to deal with this with people in an unstable situation. They can oftentimes bring in a negotiator in case the shooter is still alive to try and de-escalate the emotion, the violence. When you saw there that the, the number of officers uh, on scene had gone up to about 100, because think about this, you really don't know. You're working outside of a vacuum and you don't know how many shooters are in there. In this case, they have confirmed that it's one shooter. The shooter is deceased, but it takes a while to be able to process and get that because we've seen a number of shootings where there are two shooters on scene, multiple shooters, and that can be very difficult when you're trying to secure the premises especially in schools with a lot of small rooms on yeah, widespread out they've got to get a schematic the plan of the school to be able to go through and clear every single room every bathroom yeah. every janitor's closet where someone could be hiding reminds it, you of how precious life is yeah, you know absolutely. when you hug your little children in the morning unfortunately in this case sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen at the school that day and um, it's very scary. Katie was saying that, or you were saying actually, Harris, that the um, principal was sending out a text to his wife. The and vice saying, principal had texted yeah, his wife that there's an active shooter. Can you imagine at that getting time. that text? I, I can't imagine. And as the doctor said, no parent wants to get that. I, I want to draw our attention, though, to this brand new video coming into Fox News. Uh, they're doing what Kimberly was saying. They're, they're trying to clear the premises there. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of information on the shooter, but we are getting some in what witnesses are saying that they saw. We're awaiting a news conference. This is suburban Portland, Oregon, a school shooting, Reynolds High School. A tough day there. We're on the story. Stay with us.